Thank you. Time back on. That's rough craft, big boy. Hello guys, welcome back to the Captain's Run, episode two. Um, I didn't think I'd be able to get a second episode, but they have given me a second episode, I think because of Colin Garland, has got us over the line for number two. Um, it is, uh, while we're up here in Manly, it's a chance for um, the players to um, let you in on our insights on all things hub related, uh, football related, and obviously... Um, call some past players um, and call up a couple of guests as well and I get to change the second host chair um, Angus Brayshaw was very good last week and I did promise him another chance while we're in this hub um, but I've gone with Jake Lever today Jake welcome to the captain's run oh, thank you very much for having me um, I'm glad it's a podcast because Gus probably wouldn't have got a second chance I don't think with that pill of his but uh, yeah I'm glad I'm here yeah, he's, he's got an interesting pill. Um, I think that was Very the strong feedback from the Melbourne faithful uh, regarding the podcast was, can you not film it? Yeah. Um, so that's something I've just had to go for a bit more of a good looking person like yep. yourself. Thank you very much. Um, the moustache is still alive and well. Yes, alive and well. Um, getting some good feedback of late, Max, so, which is... Uh, it was quite surprising, to be honest. It's starting to get a little bit thicker now and I yep. think people are just become accustomed to it did you listen to the podcast last week uh i listened to a little bit yeah um obviously we were able to get uh angus's mum on yes and she was able to tell us about a couple of fibs angus has been telling um i was going to get your dad but i'm actually scared of him um fair enough would not want to get anywhere near him slash be on a phone call with him because i'd be (laughs) worried about my own life um so instead we got what you have been portraying as your, the next best thing is your dad. You, apparently he was part of your childhood. We've got Brian Taylor on. Yes, uh, big news. So big BT, he's given up his time. So yeah. Uh, yeah, no, very excited to talk to him later on in the show. And we do have another teammate. Uh, looking forward to that. A former teammate. Uh, played with both of us, so I'm excited for that. Um, let's talk about the, uh, the win on the weekend. Um, we're up against uh, the Suns. Obviously great in the contest. Probably one of the form teams in the comp, and uh, it was our first game up here in the hub. Um, it was good to get a win. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Um, I thought that uh, we had a really good week uh, coming up here into the hub, uh, and then from then on, uh, the vibes around the place and the, the energy that we brought uh, throughout the game was really good, and something that you know myself and you both know that we've been working on is our connection inside 50. Um, and looking back at the vision, It definitely wasn't perfect, but it was much better than it probably had previous weeks. So it was a great four-quarter performance, you'd probably say. Um, We played some good footy throughout, and uh, it's great to get the hub life started off like that. I did uh, did re-watch the game, um, which I tend to do majority of the the time. Yeah, I tend to to re-watch the game. Um, And the thing that struck me the most um, was what we did under pressure late. Um, obviously there was a lot of things coming left right and centre from people back in Melbourne about the way we were playing Um, and majority was probably warranted around our skill execution and I don't think you can find a more intense uh, period to uh, execute your skills in that fourth quarter Um, the first week of the hub a little bit dewy Um, we're up against probably the form team of the comp like I said and we had Clay Nolivy hit Christian Petraka with a little bullet pass and then Petraka goes back and kicks it we had Sam Wiedemann come in for his first game after four weeks, probably feeling a lot of pressure to kick two great set shots. Um, I was really proud of the boys from that from that point of view. Yeah, and so was I, to be honest. I think that you, the three names that you mentioned there in uh, Clayton, Christian and Sam, they've probably been three of the hardest working blokes over the last sort of four or five weeks in terms of that, that exact thing. You know, Weedo with his goal kicking um, and then Clayton and Track with their kicking. Uh, you know, to, to see Christian Petrarca line up from 50 metres out, 55 metres out, and to put it almost 40 metres behind the goal umpire's head. um, It was absolutely amazing. And I think it's just really put in the work that that they have done. um, And to see him kick that goal, it was really good. So um, I think the things that we're working on at the minute, Max, they're uh, starting to come to the forefront of the game. Yeah, the one thing that gets me the most about that game, last thing about the Gold Coast game, is the call of, uh, well, the commentary post Harley Bunnell's goal um, to say, I think it was a quote from Anthony Hudson, who's one of my favourite commentators, so I won't come after him, but 
Um, he said something like, it looks like they've won the flag or something. And we've always had our challenges with over-celebrating, uh, apparently. And yes, we haven't won two in a row a lot, and uh, the jury will be out if we do lose this week against Hawth- Hawthorne. But um, that was the first time Harley Bunnell's kicked a goal for obviously four seasons. Um, and it was a magical moment, uh, the fact that he could do it after the siren. I was running from the far wing before he even kicked it. Um, and that's just the general emotion that we had that first week of the hub. So that did sort of get to me. I'm not sure if Anthony meant it like that, but I'm sure there would have been some people thinking we were a bit over the top. But um, it was there for a reason. Harley is one of the much-loved people of our mm. football club. Yeah, definitely. I think that uh, you also got to realise probably AFL these days, it's very hard to win a football match. Um, even from when I come into the AFL, which was only five years ago, um, you used to probably have some games where you'd play against the bottom four or five teams and you go, I think we're going to win today. It's almost a depending on how much. There's no games like that now. So um, you talk about celebrating wins and you just have to realise how hard it is to win football and yep. exactly what you're talking about with Harley. Like for someone to, to come in, I've spoke about this a lot, you come in and you're in the rehab group it's really hard to impact the club sometimes but for him the day one that he walked in he impacted the club um he's such a love member of our group he cares about everyone's life he cares about everyone's football and um it was probably a build-up because i'm sure you would have remembered in the second quarter when he yeah, did snap touched. that goal yeah. and it ended up going to the goal review and it was it was touched so yep. i think it was a bit of a build-up and then obviously you got that opportunity after the siren and yeah i was the same as you mate i ran from center half back made sure i got around him i don't think it was a case of over celebrating i think it's just celebrating the good things in football and a good good things that are happening in 2020 it hard to come by yeah now i was relatively harsh on Angus for his question uh, the answer length last week um, oh my God. that was borderline then okay. so if we can just keep that down no worries. Uh, we do want to talk to Brian for as long as we can so um, family in the hub uh, Jason Jess um, have the boys uh, been good has there been any nannying going on from Harmsy in particular uh, no definitely not Harmsy I've St- uh, stuck well clear of him um, yeah. definitely not going near Harmsy he needs some more schooling than Jace does I think he's an outside um, chance to homeschool uh, Lani Jetter isn't he uh, <laughs> I'd hope not for her sake <laughs> mate <laughs> no um, he's in the class with oh, Lani yeah, he's Jetter. in the yes, class yes yes, yes, yes yes he's got to join the class um, <laughs> yeah but no got the family in the hub um, very lucky very fortunate to be able to bring them up um, as much as it was four suitcases full it's probably not as difficult as some people with kids that are at school or just going into school um jace doesn't really do much other than cry and play with his toys so we're we're pretty lucky we're able to he's just not move on, it he's on. not up to fractions yet no nah, not quite yet he's almost right. there he's on additions but no fractions <laughs> yeah. um, Bod yeah. bass. very lucky um oh, i mean anyone that gets an interview with jake lever mm. at this time of the year wants to ask a mark rusciuto related question yep um, and I feel like uh, that I have to do that um, because he has claimed that you're on a whole lot more money than I am. So um, I want to just get to the bottom of that. Um, obviously, reigning best and fairest um, should be somewhere near the top of the tree and I'm yep. almost a quarter of the numbers that he was saying to you. So um, any response to Mark Crusciuto on this uh, uh, on, 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 on the captain's run? Do you want to get the captain's run there on the front page of the Herald Sun for, for me? Oh, look, no, I think the whole way through this, I think I've been pretty um, calm with it and, and not really hard hitting back to the comments that Mark made. Um, I think Goody come out and protected me in terms of it's definitely not the numbers that I'm on. Um, I'm on much more than that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just had to chuck that in there. No, so I think that... Uh, from where Mark was coming uh, from, I think that uh, he's a very passionate person about the Adelaide Footy Club. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't really know which one it is. Um, I wasn't the only one in that conversation. There was a number of other ex-Adelaide players that were very disappointed with the comments. Yep. Um, Rory Sloan actually has reached out and, and just apologised to most of the players, I think, that were mentioned, So, which was good. and um, Yeah, but for me, it was just more... Um, I think I just wanted to move past it once I left Adelaide. Uh, I, I want to be known as a Melbourne Footy Club player now. I, I think that once those comments were made, it was almost like ex-Adelaide player Jake Lever again, where I thought I'd moved on from that. So that that was probably the most annoying thing. And I guess, as you could probably understand, Max, when bad things are said about you, 
doesn't really affect you as much. It's probably more the people around you, um, including my family and, and my wife, Jess. You know, she was almost really upset about the comments, but it's almost like the people that, that the comments get made about, like myself, you know, it's almost like water yep. off a duck's back, but it's the effect on everyone else. Um, should we... Uh, this is a, a, a supporter question that's, that's yep. come in from M. Gorn. Um, oh, yeah. M. Gorn from, Gorn from Melbourne. Um, he wants to know, should we give Oscar McDonald half of your contract because he, you only do good when he's in the team? I think Oscar has actually claimed that too, yeah. So yeah. Maybe, maybe we should. Great question. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thanks to M. Gorn out there. Um, you drink a tea before the game. Um, why do you do that? And can you stop it, please? Um, no, I'm not going to stop it. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I do drink a nice uh, green tea before a game. Uh, I don't really know why. I think it just sort of calms me down a little bit. Um, I'm a bit like you. It's funny. We, we sit the same way. We sit with our legs crossed and yep. I sit there before a game with my legs crossed, drinking my tea. Everyone has a laugh at me. Yep. Um, That's not a bit like me at all. You do. I've got my legs crossed, but, yeah, that, but that, you there's always... no similarity there at all. You're drinking, you're drinking tea and getting laughed at. You get laughed at a lot. You might not drink tea, but you do get laughed I'm at a lot. I'm practicing my ruck taps before a game, mate. <laughs> no, you're not. Um, last question before we go to the news. Um, yeah, I, I've got a news segment. It's great. <laughs> well, we still pay Ben Gibson for the podcast, so we've got to get him in somehow. Yeah, and yep, have it's to. easy to do a five-minute news yep, section. Yep. Just get him in, get him yep. out. Um, the, uh, I, I really want to know about the power stance that you did before the uh, grand final. Um only because you don't do it here. So I just, why did you do it there and, and, and um, did it work? I do practice it every now and then when I, while I'm here, Max. So yeah, you are into yeah. your mindfulness and yeah, so yeah, am yeah. I. And I've, to be fair, I'd be um, the whole the whole club's into mindf- to the mindfulness yep. side and I'd be you'd be stupid not to. Um, just in particular, the power stance. Yeah. What was that supposed to be? Um, it was based off um, the program that, uh, I can't remember, the, the well, I don't think guys. we're allowed to say it. Yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. actually, we, we, we might not mention their name. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, they were based off Cristiano Ronaldo's uh, stance before oh, yes. he took he, a penalty shot. He does shot. do that stance, um, yes. So almost um, he felt like that watching it, I'm, I'm not sure the guy who ran the program spoke to Cristiano Ronaldo ever um, because if he did, he'd probably get paid a lot more. Yep. Um, but he was just talking about that he felt like uh, Cristiano, when he stood there in that position, it, it was a bit of a power stance, um, made him feel a bit better about himself, a bit more confident, chest out, and that was basically about it. Um, so we decided to do it for the whole final series. It worked three out of four it times. It worked three out of four times, and on the on the final dance, it definitely didn't work. So right. we'll we'll probably throw that one in the bin. All right, well, let's go to the uh, the news segment. I've got a little throw for this. Um, obviously, you won't know it, so just bear with me. It's Benny Gibson. He's got the news. He's got the news. This is a great introduction. I, I do enjoy it, and thanks for the little clip earlier without me being on here to defend myself. but um, I'm good at that, aren't I? You are. Yeah. You've given me a five-minute allocation, which is going to be tough to fill because there's not really that much happening up here, to be perfectly honest. Yep. But I'm going to start with news around the hub. Now, Oscar McDonald uh, yesterday actually came to us and said he wants help logging back into his Twitter. He <laughs> says it's because he wants yep. to delete his account. Do you think it might be to check the compliments after his first good game? Is check there a coincidence that Oscar McDonald wants to get back on Twitter the week that a Melbourne supporter is actually saying something nice about him? Um, that yes yeah Oscar I feel for Oscar he's one of my closest friends here and um, he has been off social media for a long time um, due to some of the stuff that he does get Um, but uh, I mean sure he can come on and see some good stuff I don't think that's the reason though because if you do know Oscar I dare say he does not care (laughs) he doesn't (laughs) Now, in terms of an injury update, Tom McDonald's obviously the news. Copped a pretty nasty poke in the eye. Went to hospital after the game on Saturday as a precaution. Now, not sure if he's going to get up. I'm not a doctor, but it would be a a pretty tough game to play. Probably a little bit of risk around that eye. So we'll just keep an eye on that. Uh, No pun intended there. Um, I dare say the pun was intended if you wrote it down. (laughs) I didn't write it down. I've got my iPad here just to look like a newsbreaker, news reader. Yes, okay. There's actually nothing on there. (laughs) (laughs) And then the other thing is uh, you actually wanted me to mention this. You wanted me to look into stats in terms of Ruckman. Now, yep. Jared Witts is the tallest ever player to be named captain. Yep, he's got me by um, a centimetre. And you had him 
uh, one-on-one battle on the weekend and you wanted me to bring it up because you gave him a bit of a bath. I That's reckon. not what I said. I think that was roughly it. No. Uh, <laughs> 15 disposals, eight marks, 30 hit outs. Best on ground to most people, but only nine coaches votes. Who do you think didn't give you the five? Goody or Ju? Uh, like I don't know, Stuart. Um, it sounds like I do because it went first name basis yeah. there. But I think it was Goody, mate. Uh, I, yeah, let's just say safe and Goody. He, he, he loves track. I'm presuming track got the five. Yeah, that's very possible. Now, looking ahead to Hawthorne, I'd guess Burgoyne could come back in this week. John Patton will be out. One thing we know about Hawthorne is they generally respond well after a poor performance. They got touched up by Geelong earlier in the year, came out and beat Richmond by five goals. They got done by five goals last week to Collingwood. You're expecting a pretty tough battle this weekend? They're pretty similar to uh, Geelong. They don't really lose two in a row very often. Um, And we've got a big challenge to try and win two in a row for the first time in a while as well. So um, it's going to be an exciting battle. Our games against Hawthorne are always close. Well, they have been for the last three or four years. They probably pants us the decade before that. But um, in the last four years, they've been really, really close and really exciting games of football. I love to always get one over Chip Frawley and it's going to be even better now. Sam Frost is there. So hopefully we can knock both of them off. Very good. That's all I've got. It wasn't a lot, but... It was a lot. It went for, Jesus, went for three minutes longer than last week and you had more news last week. Um, we'll no, that, that down in the edit. That was the news. Uh, we'll be back with uh, a couple of special guests. Thanks to our co-principal partner and podcast sponsor, Zurich Insurance. For over 100 years, they've been insuring the people and things you truly love. And just like you, they truly love footy and they truly love the Ds. All right. This is my favourite segment. Uh, we get to call uh, a past player. Any phone number that pops up in my phone, I'll give it a ring. Uh, I've spammed the contacts list and up comes the big bear, Cameron Pedersen. He was a crowd favourite, a supporter favourite. Uh, he played 80-odd games, started off on the rookie list at North Melbourne and played probably his best footy over here at the D's, although he did take Dan Cox and Nick Nat Nui to the cleaners in his first game over there at North. But, Pedo, you there? Yes, I'm here. Mate, uh, it's, it's Gorney and Rick Lever, um, two of your former teammates. Um, thanks for joining us. First of all, congratulations. I hear there could be another kid on the way, hopefully a boy this time. Uh, yes, yes, that's, that's true. I'm, um, I'm now going to have four kids, so I've got to get the people moving. I've got to get the Kia Carnival going now. So that's uh, <laughs> another, another girl. So uh, Melbourne Football Club girl, women's team, AFLW. They'll have plenty of girls coming through. Beautiful, no That's beautiful. Awesome. Uh, now, Pedo, um, we know that uh, back down at Melbourne, uh, when you played, not only for Melbourne, but when you're at Casey, you were a, a man on a mission out there taking marks at either end of the ground. Um, now, what does footy look like for you now? Uh, we did hear that you were playing local footy, um, and how did you go last year? Uh, yes, I played um, down at Phillip Island, uh, where I've moved down. Uh, yeah, we went through undefeated won the grand final which was good so um, yeah it was good to yeah you know it was just good to get around the boys that were there just for you know just wanted to play footy and it was yeah, it's a good club so yeah went through undefeated and won in the grand final Gee, by kids, un- so. undefeated let me guess yeah. you won the Coleman and the Brown though um, I didn't win the Coleman I played Ruck so but oh. uh, I did win the league but not the not the Brown, not the uh, Coleman, no. Oh, okay, okay. What about footy this year, Pedo? Um, obviously, with all these trying times that everyone's going through at the minute, is there local footy going on? Uh, no local football down here. Uh, I am coaching the under-18s, though, so we're getting a season starting next week, which will be good. So, oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, doing some coaching this year instead of playing. Now, my my favourite moment of yours, Cameron, comes off, off the field. Um, it's easily a story that still gets told today is the story when a when a young Oz kick kid a uh, young actually I think it was a prep kid asked you at a school clinic how much do you get paid um, and he you then went to write on the whiteboard a scale of how much everyone gets paid and you put Buddy Franklin at the top at a million dollars you put poor Joel Smith that you were there at the clinic with on 60,000 down the bottom <laughs> end um, and you, you even wrote the teacher's wage up up there on about 80, 90 um, which I'm presuming is your wage now do you remember that day? Yes, I do remember that day. I was just trying to explain to them that you need to, even though we play football, we still do things outside of outside of football because football see, football careers only go for about six years and you've got to work for 50 years. I was trying to explain that, yep, yep. you know, become an AFL player, but we still do things outside of 
and 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 we're not all on Rick, on what Rick Lever's on. It's um, it's it's obviously pretty. It's yeah, pretty hard to stay at that. Somewhere. What are you nine yeah. nine hundred a year? Is that what Rashudo said? Yeah, nine fifty. Yeah. yeah, I hear the um, I hear captains' pays are pretty low too. <laughs> yeah, you have to take a pay cut, the big fella. You reckon? <laughs> Uh, and my, my, my only other great off-field story for you is I used to I, I hate standing on scales because my weight fluctuates something shocking but I didn't realise you hated to stand on scales as well um, weren't you saying you were you were 90 kilos but in fact you were 105 at one stage uh, yes I did come back at 103 and got a good kick in the butt from Goody and um, being competitive, he said I have to get below 95, so got down to 89, and then got all two. <laughs> and then you had to play ruck. <laughs> yes, and then I had to play. Yeah, I had to play ruck. So yeah, that's all right. I like a like a bit of competition. So yeah. So Pedro, obviously now uh, in Victoria, the the lockdowns going on, and probably not down your area. Um, but what is the family doing in lockdown? Uh, yeah, so we're in, um, so I'm in the Bass Coast, so yeah, we're face-to-face teaching. Everyone else in Melbourne is uh, doing remote learning, um, so we're pretty lucky. So the family, we own a restaurant down here, so uh, we're still still running that. Um, other, than, other than that, yeah, the girls go to the same school as I do, and our third, Lucy, she goes to school next year, so she's still doing kinder. And it's kind of life like normal, it's just that we can't get back into Melbourne at the moment. Yeah, which probably isn't a bad thing it's at the moment. Thing. No, it's um, not a bad thing because we don't want people coming from Melbourne and bringing COVID down to our end. Correct, correct. My 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 parents are down in Gippsland as well, and they they seem to be loving the fact that no one else is down there at the moment. Yes, yeah. Everyone had to leave on uh, was it Tuesday night last week? So yeah. Uh, we asked we asked Garlo last week who his who his favourite player is. Um, I'd love to know yours as well. Favourite current player at the D's. Favourite current player at the D's. Um, uh, oh, it'd have to be between probably yourself, Jack, and Track, probably. Yeah. Probably yes. the three, probably the three most consistent performers yeah. and, so far. I'd say. And you didn't say Jake then, did you? Uh, no, that was more. That was you, the big fella. Yeah. Jake's yep. been good as well. It's good to see him getting a good run at it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Thanks, Thanks mate. Uh, and what's your what's your favourite memory of, of of when you're at your time at the D's? Favourite memory. Um, Oh, it was a bit different. I actually mean, really enjoyed the at the end of the season, the the one night we had it when we got told what we're doing in the off season, and then we all kind of got to go out together because I didn't get to go out as much because obviously I lived like an hour away. So yeah, um, I yeah enjoyed those times, and um, yeah, I guess I miss just hanging around with. I guess the good thing is that even though I was 30, 31, 32 when I finished, you hang around with 18, 19 year olds, it makes you feel a bit younger, and you just yeah. do things that you probably wouldn't do at your age you are now. So. And you were a very good performer on those nights as well, Cameron. <laughs> yeah, short, short-lived, but <laughs> uh, Last of all, before we let you go, are you still a D's supporter, and what are your thoughts on uh, the D's in 2020? Uh, yes, yes, still a D's supporter. Um, thoughts on D's... 2020, uh, some things haven't changed. We still get lots of the ball and still bombed inside 50, and it still rebounds very quickly. Um, but uh, there's encouraging signs, a big, you know, healthier list, um, and hopefully we're going to start yeah, getting that connection a bit better and start kicking some more goals. Good man, we need you across half half back so you can mark them all. Uh, four. That's if I was actually standing near someone to start with. Would help, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, good man um, hope everything's well down the Bass Coast but it sounds like it is and good luck with the 18s this year coach, uh, coaching awesome thanks thanks boys thanks Cam alright see ya see ya mate alright Jake uh, I've talked about this earlier in the show you you do know Brian Taylor on a personal level um, so we were able to get him on which is exciting um, we know BT's very very busy man um, so, have we got him on the, on the line? Are you there, Brian? Yes, I'm here, boys. How are you? Yes, very good, Brian. Now, yes, as Max said, um, I guess we do know each other on a, a little bit. Is, that you, is that you, Jake? Yes, that is me, mate. You're, you're putting a radio voice on, like a podcast <laughs> voice on, or is, are you going to talk normal? Yeah, sorry, mate. It is something that I have been known to do, and my friends and uh, family do pick up on that. I do change my voice a little bit. Do you like it? <laughs> it's pretty good, mate. It's pretty <laughs> Thanks, cool, mate. yeah. <laughs> now, yes, as I was saying, we, we do know each other on a little bit of a personal level, um, yeah. but... Uh, I just wanted to, uh, you know, get this off my chest now. We're, we're, yeah. Max always um, talks about the wedding day, 
um, how I were to get you to to roaming Brian on our wedding day. Can you just talk <laughs> us through that, uh, how it went? Because there is a few mixed stories. Well, I don't know. I don't know how it happened because it wasn't intended to happen. I don't think. <laughs> yes. um, you, you, you said I would be a guest at your wedding. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't tell me that there'd be any role that I'd be playing at your wedding. So I was there purely as a guest. I, that's what I thought anyway. And um, and then you thought, well, uh, might as well, might as well capitalise on the fact that it, you know, you can do this, and uh, that's sort of how it happened. Is that? your memory of it or yeah, not? Yeah, that, that is my memory of it and I yeah. really do appreciate it because I think it was one of the best things that uh, was done at my wedding. But um, yes, Max still to this day um, takes the mickey out, out of me because of it. But uh, What's yeah, your was... problem with it, Max? How, how, did you, how did you get invited as a guest in the first place? Are you are you, are you and Jake pers- personal friends? We're long-time family friends, yeah. family first, and then Jake is a youngster at Calder Cannons, and my kids played together. Yep. I had several kids that played with not just Jake, but with his young brothers as well. Uh, so, and I know Jake's dad really well, um, and so that's sort of how it eventuated. So, yeah, I, I would hope it was a personal invitation. If it was, an, if it was an invitation just to do the roaming, I'd be. <laughs> I'd be disappointed. Uh, Definitely Jake. not BT. You know that, mate. You know that. <laughs> so you saw him when he was actually good at football. Yeah, I saw him when he was before he did knees and all that sort of stuff. He's, <laughs> right. he's dropped off a little bit, but uh, <laughs> just starting to work his way back into action now. Now I'm I I am petrified and cannot get within eyesight of Alan Lever, uh, Jake's old man. Have you overcome that fear? Um, uh, the fear of seeing L is that what you're worried the about? The fear of being around L. I oh, just, I just, oh. just the awe of yeah. Big L. He he commands your attention and he commands the space around you, and you can't come into that space. It's <laughs> like uh, he owns it. Yeah. And watch out if you sort of jump in there because um, he'll he'll eat you up and spit you out in very very quick time. He's um, <laughs> He's a very good ally, let's put it that way. Um, I, BT, you know what I'm going to say about that. He is as soft as anything under all that. He yeah. is not like yeah. that at all. He's very, yeah. very soft. Um, yeah, now, I've seen, seen him at home and you're, you're right there. He is pretty soft. <laughs> That's yes, right. He is. Uh, now, BT, uh, obviously we spoke about your family. Um, if you wouldn't mind uh, talking about what you're doing currently, obviously now with the Victorian lockdown, are you um, at home on your... 50 acre almost ranch type situation up in uh, Lawn or are you, yeah. uh, where are you? Yeah, no, we're, d- we're down in Lawn, so we live on Great Ocean Road overlooking the ocean, which is fantastic. Got a big bush block here, nothing on it, but a uh, big bush block. So, yeah, I've got um, two of my sons, one uh, who goes to uni, is obviously doing it uh, via via the uh, new method, yeah. and uh, another one that you played with, I think, Harrison, um, he's down here working as well. He's a he's a talent manager or an athlete manager um, of international, well, not significance, but of international style. So he's, yeah. he looks after Ash Barty and uh, and Steph Gilmore, Mick Fanning, and and, and they just signed two young gun surfers, two one fourteen year old and one sixteen year old as well. So he's yeah, right. he's working from home down here doing all that stuff. I was actually just about to ask you about Harrison because I am good friends with him and. Um, he seems to post a lot of photos on Instagram. I was just wondering, does he do any housework around there? Because it doesn't really look like he's just all there for the fame, it looks like. No, he's a, he's a little tight ass. He is here purely <laughs> to save money on all meals. Um, he has his own pla- he has his own place in, in Fitzroy, and then he has a place that he rents out. And we are simply a way of him living cheaply. He uh, gives us no love. He does no jobs around the house. We've, I have four boys, and I, we've lived on a farm all of our life, and not one of them have ever, ever lifted a finger to do anything on the farm <laughs> at all. Not once have they ever come to me and said, Dad, can we give you a hand? No, nah, nothing. Doesn't That's surprise me. All right, let's, let's, let's talk footy. Um, well, it's not really footy. It's Roman Bryan. Um, I re- I just remember at some point. I think it was when Adam Tomlinson was playing for GWS. Um, you, you you did some Roman Bryan, and you you just chucked out that his dad's my dentist. Um, yes. Is, is there is there some truth in that? 
Yes, that is, that is that is very true. His dad has since retired. I think he retired last year or year before. So his dad has since retired as a as a full time dentist. Um, but he was yes, top end of Collins Street. He was and a very good dentist. And he was so good that I haven't been able to. Well, I haven't been back to the dentist since because I'm worried I won't get one that's as good as uh, Adam's old man. So. <laughs> Um, yes, he was definitely. Okay, okay, I'll I'll make sure I tell Adam that. Although you probably already have. Um, now the the second thing is um, I've obviously had me set shot troubles, uh, Brian, throughout the last couple of years. And uh, actually, I'm just going to play a bit of audio of some of your calls around my set shots if you want to have a listen. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Now I am I am working on it, Brian. But do you have any tips for me? Because you always seem when you commentate games to know exactly where the players should put it, and um, I think you're all over mine. They are identical as you as you as you said. Any tips? Look, I, I don't have any tips because I need to see you a bit more, Max, to, to know what's going on. But what I do say is that I attend four games live of football every weekend, mainly over the over the 30 years I've been doing this, mainly Marvel, MCG, basically in Melbourne and other grounds around Australia as well. But So I feel like I get to know the peculiarities of particular grounds a lot. For instance, uh, pocket at Marvel Stadium, as you look at the game from the change room side of the ground down to the left end, uh, on the left side of the ground, it always, it is all, no matter how you bend the ball, it always drifts left to right. Now, yeah. I'm, I am staggered that players like you guys that, and someone like myself that are seeing lots and lots of games at that ground would not get and listen to that little piece of, uh, that little golden nugget yeah. and, and, and allow for it. What, what, what is it with you blokes? You should, you should copyright that and charge us. Because um, it's 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 really obvious to me. I could go to most pockets in, on most ovals and tell you which way the ball is probably going to go. If there's a little bit of wind, that's obvious. But if there's no wind, it's not so obvious. Yeah. So <laughs> I just I just love the art of goal kicking. I love the art. I love watching, say, someone like Tom Hawkins, who really knows his kick well. Yeah. Every time he kicks it, it, it swings about two or three meters left to right. You just absolutely know, and that's a guy that knows his kick really well. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, make sure that uh, we'll write all this stuff down, Brian, and we'll get Max here to do it tomorrow. <laughs> so, no, uh, thank you very much, mate. We've taken up enough of your time now. Um, just want to really thank you for uh, giving up your time and uh, hopefully hey, you enjoy yourself. Just one thing, I've never had the chance to ask footballers, just with the with that roaming stuff Channel 7 make me do, yes. I don't do it voluntarily, um, why is it that players, um, particularly clubs, not so much players, but clubs led lead the players why is it that they are um shy of doing it or not wanting to do it what, what is it it's just a, it's just a quick hello it's like gee you played well today max or uh it's interviewing your family what, what why is it that you wouldn't want to do that um oh, well from my experience i'd say it'd be nerves um, I'd say people are genuinely nervous to be put out on the big screen and show themselves uh, from that point of view. And in, in, in that environment around 21 of your teammates and family that are there, it'd be quite a nerve-wracking uh, feeling. I mean, you're on TV a lot. You probably wouldn't have that feeling, but that would be the only thing I could think of. Um, yeah. But, I mean, as as for me, you know, Brian, I'd, I'm happy yeah. to talk to you, and so is, and so is Jake, but... I dare say just that the real boys club of 21 players around and you don't want to say something and then um, it comes up in the meeting on Monday getting uh, taken the piss out of would be the main yeah. issue. Yeah, I get that. And I, I tell you what, the Melbourne Footy Club are probably, along with North Melbourne, North Melbourne and Melbourne are the two best media-handled clubs in the competition, I reckon. So that's a credit to your, to your media department. No, we have a couple of media people in this room and they cannot fit in the room anymore, so I don't know why you did that. <laughs> Very good. Uh, thanks, 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 Brian. Um, good on, guys. Hopefully you can call a couple of live games this year, but it doesn't look likely, unfortunately. No, it certainly doesn't. Good man. Thanks, BT. See you guys. All right, it's time uh, to give back to the supporters. Um, the old podcast used to have to make them get in via Facebook and keyboard warriors can hide behind fake names on social media, as we've seen and we don't like. 
Um, but we give the chance to be able to get people to call in. Um, and we put up a little activity, I think, on the on the Facebook and the Instagram uh, to tweet your best photo of myself uh, and that Melbourne supporter. Um, it won't always be Max centric. The last two weeks have been. Maybe next week we can try and get another activity to get people on. But um, we actually got someone we both know, Jake, who yes. has put in a photo of all of us uh, working out of the gym. Imagine that working out in the gym. That is very yes. a long time away doing that again. But we have Sen's own John Clark. You there, John? Oh, Max, what an honor. I thought I was a thousand and one to get on this show. I thought no way would I ever get the chance. And to be here with you and a friend uh, in Jake is incredible. It's a, it's a highlight of my Melbourne supporting career. Uh, I thought you'd be thousands and one as well, but you actually, you were one in two. You only had two people reply. <laughs> Uh, and the poor old Jimmy Plunkett was on last week. So <laughs> we, couldn't, we couldn't have him back to back, unfortunately. Oh, he was very good, young James. Uh, he was very polished, so I'm a bit nervous going in uh, after him. Now, you do know both uh, Jake and I. Uh, explain, explain the connection and uh, how the photo originated. Well, the connection with Jakey is uh, a long one with his family back in Romsey, where I am uh, from as well. So Jake, I've known since he was just a boy. Uh, yeah. And then, obviously, since he's joined the footy club and got to know yourself, and we've been lucky enough to uh, catch up at Fitness XO, a lovely little studio in Richmond, where um, you like to train without your shirt on and Jake leaves it on. So yeah. that's an interesting little setup. But um, no, very, very good, hard-working crew that we've got. and uh, It's a good place to hang out. If you've known Jake for that long, how come he, your, your firstborn wasn't named after Jake and it was Max? Because his name's Jake. It's a it's a pretty ordinary name. <laughs> and his old man's a good fella, Al. Um, but he's you know pulled the wrong rein yeah, there. We and cannot say a bad word about Al because he will be hunting you down, John. <laughs> uh, I don't doubt that. But um, no, I, I went with Max for my firstborn and um, Jake's definitely on the list for number two Thanks, if we're man. lucky enough. Uh, for those that have Twitter, you are a, you are a strong tweeter. Um, very, very Melbourne-related uh, majority of your tweets. So sometimes it's hard for me to follow you. But um, over the last week, you've changed your favourite player three times. It's gone from Stephen May to Max Scorn to Mitch Hannon. Um, yeah. I, I actually do think it is Mitch Hannon, but can you tell us who is your favourite player? Yeah, it's, it's a combination of you three. Obviously, your lion-hearted um, efforts every week for a long time. I think Stephen's come in and um, brought a different edge to the club. I think he's, you know, very competitive and, and quite nasty, which I don't mind. But Mitch Hannon, boy next door, good looking, yeah. uh, very marketable. If he could play another 50 games, he could be the poster boy. And he changes the dynamic of that forward line to no extent. I think he's a, a wonderful player and he seems like a lovely bloke. So I don't know Mitch at all. So I, I don't, this is not a family connection. Yep. Uh, or any sort of um, past history, but I think he's a terrific player. Well, it seems like a family connection doesn't get you in the top three because Jake isn't no, in there. Well, you can't be. You can't, and I love Jake, and I'm scared of Al, but you can't be the best player <laughs> in the back pocket. No way. Uh, uh, one more. Is there scope for this podcast potentially making its way to Croc Media? Um, that's a very interesting question. It's a it's a tough landscape at the moment, Maxie, so I wouldn't be putting a hand out for too much money. Uh, okay. But uh, you know we do have a show called The Captain's Run every Friday morning with Kane Corns. Um, oh, really? Yeah, but uh, the only thing now, I don't know if Kane was ever the captain of his club, so he's using that licence um, very freely. This has got this has got scope to be a hit. This show, I think, obviously a niche market with the Melbourne <laughs> supporters, but um, and we seem to be a very volatile supporter group. I know you've uh, you know you keep an eye on what people have got to say out there, and we can jump on and off pretty quick. The footy club, but um, but it's I bloody think, good when we're on, isn't it? <laughs> I hate nothing better when it's on. The only the only thing I don't like is this idea that Melbourne fans disappear to the snow. I don't think that's um, a fair yeah. reflection of of the majority of the supporter base. So. Uh, Maybe fickle, but not snowgoers. I think this show's got great potential, mate, and I think you're doing a great job. That intro on the way back in, it sounded very... The golden tonsils of John Laws and the real punch of Hamish Blake, I thought it was great. <laughs> um, we did ask Jimmy Plunkett last week uh, his love for the club. Give us just a couple of sentences. Not too much, because we are a long way over time. Um, um, just tell us, to tell us why you love the Ds and, and what you're looking forward to in 2020. 
Yeah, I've uh, obviously uh, I'm a bit older than Jimmy, so I've known the club through probably some good times in the late eighties and early nineties when I was growing up uh, as a young fella. So got to see us play some good footy, some good finals. Got to watch um, Gary Lyon in his prime, and then uh, follow the club all the way back then. And looking forward to this year. Um, I think the club's done a great job of opening the doors and taking the fans along for the ride right back in the pre-season, which probably feels like years ago to you boys. But longest, um, longest pre-season doors. of my life. Yeah, well, it looked tough, and I think that hard work and the way the club explained it to the fans has um, been fantastic. So I feel like we're all on the journey together. It's a weird year, but um, I'm loving the way the the boys are you know, fighting out games, and even when you're losing, it looks like the energy and the the camaraderie is very tight. So. Um, it's been great to watch so far. Good answer. It seemed like a little bit more heart in Jimmy's answer last week, but I didn't mind it. Um, okay. We do have some trivia, uh, John. Um, okay. What, in... what, what's the prize? What do I win? You win, wait for it, Johnny, a Zurich Tiny Collection Pack. Um, I know you already have one, but you can potentially pass it off to Little Maxi. So, all right, first up, what town are we currently based in? Uh, you're in Manly. Ah, one from one. Beautiful. Yep. Good start. How many, because uh, we have Jake Lever here on the podcast, this is an Adelaide flavoured question. Oh, not, uh, not camp related, is it? No, no. Oh, <laughs> we, thank God. And we're, <laughs> we're not allowed to talk about both Adelaide camp and the Melbourne camp that went on as well. Oh, that's that's you frowned upon. You didn't go upon. on a camp. No. Adelaide went on, I've, but you didn't go on. Mate. I've completely forgot. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Uh, camp. Uh, not camp. Adelaide. Go. <laughs> How many players <laughs> have we had who originally played at Adelaide Crows? Ever or currently? Ever. Oh, Peter Vardy. One. Uh, Matty Collins. Two. Jakey Lever. Three. Uh, who else came across? The coach didn't play for us. Uh, there's got to be one more. Just give us a number. What do you reckon? Six. Ten. Ten? Yes. Aidan Riley, James Seller, John Meeson, Jake Lever, Bernie Vince, Anthony Ingerson. Uh, don't know these guys' first names. Pesh, Matt Collins, Brent Williams, and Vardy. Yes, there's a lot. Uh, question three. Jaden Hunt. Uh, has worn five different coloured headbands since his debut. What are the colours? Oh, there's a red and blue one. Yep, there's one. Uh, a red one. Uh, red or pink, yep, the two. Yeah, there's a bright, bright red. Uh, a white one. Uh, you mean black, yep, three. <laughs> yeah, a black one, of course. Uh, he wore a shoestring looking one. Yep, that's the motor neuron disease blue one, yep. <laughs> Which is terrific, and, and he what does he ones. what so does he wear right. what does he wear on Anzac Eve? He wore the Anzac Eve one. Yeah, the camera. <laughs> the, special, the special Anzac Eve one, of course. I oh, bought one. Two from three. Two from three. That's a good start. How many siblings of the boys play professional netball? How many siblings of the boys play professional? Uh, two. Yes, the Dunkleys and the McDonalds. That's right. Uh, Who's the better player? Who's the better netballer? Uh, I don't think Sasha McDonald has played yet, so I'll say Lara Dunkley. Well done. Uh, and most, who has played the most Melbourne games other than Nathan Jones? Um, uh, currently, currently, currently was the key word. Oh, on the list currently. Yeah. With the, it's not you. You've no. been around a long time. You didn't yeah. play for ages. Um, I'm going to say, uh, come on, give us a clue. What area? Of the <laughs> give us a clue. Was? It's the easiest question ever. I don't. I don't watch the current. I watch all the '90s videos. <laughs> He's got a brother. <laughs> It's Tom McDonald. It is. Congratulations. Three out of five. Uh, not sure if we can give you the prize. Do we give him the prize? I reckon we should. All right, Zurich, tiny team pack coming your way. Um, yeah, I'm sure you're going to put it up on the mantelpiece. Wow, that's a great quiz. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Johnny. Um, Good on you, Thanks boys. for coming on. Good man. Good on you. Good luck this week. Uh, and just finally, before we go, uh, just wanted to thank uh, anyone that is listening to this podcast who is a member. Um, thank you for signing up. I know it's been a tough year and it's looking more and more uh, glim. Glim? Glim? Good choice of words. Thank you. More and more glim that we uh, will be coming back to Melbourne um, to play some home games of football. Um, so, yeah, thank you for signing up. And you ha- if you are listening to the podcast and you haven't signed up, um, there's still time to do so go on the website uh, melbournefc.com.au maybe a few W's before that as well and click on that and I'm sure you'll find some good membership options